Valentine's is bearing down on us all, and love is filling the air, thick like the smoke over a forest fire. It's the time for romance, budding couples, and for the single folks to marathon sappy love films that bring us to tears. Before we begin, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Every new sub helps us achieve our goals and keeps us motivated to creating new content. With that being said, I'm your host, Raging Anybody, and here are 10 must-see romance films. Number 1. Notting Hill Divorced bookstore owner William Thacker lives in a small flat that he shares with an eccentric Welshman named Spike. One day, as fate would have it, he bumps into famous actress Anna Scott, who just happens to be perusing the books in his shop, except she's in a disguise and he doesn't realize who she truly is. She invites him to meet her up at the Ritz Hotel, where he finally discovers that she is in fact world famous, and poses as a writer for a magazine to get some one-on-one -on -one time with her. She agrees to go out with him, spending a night with him and his family celebrating his sister's birthday. A few dates later, Anna invites him back to her hotel room, where Will bumps into her current boyfriend, who has flown in as a surprise. This immediately ends the relationship and causes a rift between the two. Time passes, and she is once again in Notting Hill, this time running from the press who have leaked nude photos of her. Seeking Will out as a friend, they rekindle their romance until, once again, her fame gets in the way and everything is torn apart. They do run into each other for a third time, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. But it does result in some amazing scenes that have been eternally stamped in the minds of the people who have seen the film. So definitely check this one out. Number 2. About Time On the surface, it's a film about a family that has the ability to travel through time, passing it down from generation to generation. But, as the film unfolds, it is so much more. Tim is a loser. He screws up the easiest tasks and is the most unluckiest person in love. He can barely hold a conversation with women he likes and thus feels hopeless. That is, until his 21st birthday, when he learns from his father about his ability and how to use it. His father encourages him to use it to gain fame and money, but Tim decides he wants to fix all the mistakes he made in his love life. After a few failed attempts, he finally meets Mary, an American girl working for a publisher. However, after a successful night with Mary, when he comes home, he finds out his roommate had a disastrous one. So, using his powers, he travels back in time to help his friend out, but this results in him never meeting Mary. The rest of the film is spent with him making sure they end up together, and realizing that, just like Uncle Ben said to Peter Parker, with great power comes great responsibility. It's a beautiful film, filled with some really quirky characters and heartfelt moments. Definitely one you don't want to miss out on. Number 3. The Notebook Growing up around the time this film came out, this was considered one of the most romantic films ever made, and it still holds up in that regard. The film is set into two time periods, modern day and 1940s South Carolina. It follows a man named Noah Calhoun, who meets and instantly falls in love with Allison Hamilton. Her parents disapprove completely of the two of them together, and while they share a few tender moments with one another, it ultimately tears them apart, and she is taken back to Charleston while he ends up enlisting and going to war. A mutual friend of theirs is killed during the Battle of the Bulge, and meanwhile Allie has become a nurse and meets Captain Lon Hammond and gets engaged to him. When Noah returns from the war, he finds out his father has sold his home in order for Noah to buy the Windsor Plantation, a place he and Allie once dreamed of fixing up and spending the rest of their lives at. It just so happens, upon its restoration, the local paper wrote an article about it and posted a picture, which Ali sees, and immediately all the feelings she had for him return, and so she seeks him out, and the sparks ignite into a full-on flame. This is where the twist kicks in, which I won't spoil for the people who haven't seen the film, it's definitely a tearful moment, so I highly recommend bringing some tissues. Number 4. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Written by Charlie Kaufman, 
with the visual genius of Michel Gondry behind the camera, and you get one of the most colorful and expressionist films in the genre. If you're a fan of the show Kidding, then this film should be on your radar, and vice versa. Joel, a kind of down-on-his-luck emo loner, finds out his ex-girlfriend Clementine has undergone a procedure to erase parts of her memory containing him. This completely shatters his heart, and so he decides to undergo the same procedure, and to prepare for it, he uses a tape recorder to recount all of the memories he has of their volatile relationship. Later that night, employees of Lasuna enter his apartment while he is sleeping, set up shop to keep him sedated, and begin the procedure. One of them, Patrick, leaves to go see his girlfriend, who just happens to be Clementine, which he seduced by using her memories of Joel. The other two, Stan and Mary, begin the process and take a bunch of drugs and start having a sex and party throughout the night. Throughout the film, we experience the memories Joel has of Clem as they are being erased in a somewhat non-linear fashion, and we see both of them how, and how they fall in love and how it ultimately detonated. At the end of the film, Joel tries to hold on to the last memory, but fails, as the procedure is completed and all things Clementine erased from his mind. But there's a snag. He is drawn to Montauk, a place very significant to his relationship to Clementine, and by chance, when he goes there, she is on the same train. They are instantly drawn to each other. Patrick, who has been keeping tabs on Clementine in an obsessive manner, sees that they found each other and tries to sabotage it by sending them their files from Lasuna. But even after hearing all the ways things went wrong, Joel and Clem decide to try again. It's kind of a depressing movie that somehow lifts you soaring into the sky by the end. So if you haven't seen it, this is a must watch. Number 5. Titanic Probably the highest grossing film on this list, winner of multiple awards, and one of the most expensive films ever made, while it is mainly about the voyage of the doomed cruise ship Titanic, a beautiful and spirited young love story blossoms at the center of it all. Maiden voyage and iceberg catastrophes aside, the film is mostly in the point of view of two people from very different worlds. You've got Jack, played by a young, eager Leonardo DiCaprio, who just wants to see the world and experience all there is in life, and happens to win a pair of boarding passes for him and his friend Fabrizio in a game of poker. Then there's Rose, played by Kate Winslet, a wealthy debutante arranged to marry a business tycoon to establish a future for her family. The two have one thing in common, though. Each would love to escape their own lives and be truly free. One fateful night, after the world feels too heavy and everything comes colliding down on Rose's mind, she runs to the upper deck near the stern of the ship, climbing over the railing, ready to plummet into the icy depths of the ocean below. It just so happens Jack was taking a stroll nearby, smoking a cigarette, and sees her in her moment of need. He calmly approaches her and coaxes her back in, saving her life. When the Master of Arms appears, having been searching for her, they accuse Jack of attacking Rose, and while she does lie about why she was there, she does tell them the truth in that he saved her life from falling overboard. The rest of the film plays out with them getting to know each other, with Cal, her husband-to-be, growing ever more jealous and dangerous. Then, of course, the ship collides with its destiny, and it ends with some of the biggest heartbreak ever caught on film, a moment that has been parodied into oblivion. A masterpiece of a film, it's a spectacle that you do not want to miss out on. Hey folks, sorry to interrupt, but we just launched our very own merch store at FatNinja.shop. Uh, we sell everything from t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more, so we would greatly appreciate it if you checked it out. All the proceeds go to our future projects, so uh, it helps us make any kind of you know, movies and, and short films that we want to make in the future. So... Um, if you got time, check out FatNinja.shop. Uh, thanks again, and uh, back to the video. Number six, My Best Friend's Wedding. It's so hard to pinpoint the most romantic film that stars Julia Roberts, as she is so incredibly easy to love in almost every film she's been in. However, 
I believe this film, even with its slightly bittersweet ending, is probably her most romantic role of them all, one many of us can probably relate to, absurd antics aside. Many of us out there have fallen in love with someone where we either just missed our moment or they didn't feel the same way, and because of a strong bond and friendship, we stayed in each other's lives and must learn to let go of those feelings and embrace what it is. That is exactly how this film plays out, as Julianne has been best friends with Michael after a bad first few dates, and while he was always wild about her, she was too busy being herself and enjoying her life that she ignored her feelings for him. That is, until one day he calls her up and tells her he is getting married. This sets off alarm bells all in her mind. At first she feels jealous, as if someone is taking away her best friend. And then of course after meeting Kimmy, she thinks she is a terrible match for him. But, through some sound counsel from her other friend George, she realizes she's madly in love with Michael. She tries to get them to break up before the wedding, even kind of succeeding, but ultimately feels guilty about the whole ordeal and confesses the truth to both of them. In the end, he chooses Kimmy, someone who always put him first, and she says one of the most tearful goodbyes during the wedding toast. After everything, she lets go of the future she imagined with him and moves on with her life. It's the perfect film for those of us who might feel a little alone on Valentine's Day because it shows us it's okay. Sometimes things don't work out, but there's always a tomorrow, and you never know where it will take you. Make sure to put this one on your watch list. Number 7. Love and Basketball The chemistry between Omar Epps and Sanaya Latham is on fire in this film. Divided into four quarters, this film follows Monica and Quincy when they first meet as kids, sharing a common interest in basketball. Monica even beats him in their first one-on-one -on -one game, and they share their first kiss not too long after. In the next quarter, Monica and Quincy are now in high school. He's the MVP of the boys' basketball team, and she captains the girls' team. While he is popular dating a popular girl, she secretly struggles with her feelings for him, until one night, when they both find out that they've both been accepted at the same university, they make love. In the third quarter, college life is tough. Quincy tries to deal with the pressures of court fame, as well as his father's infidelity, and Monica, on the other hand, struggles being a team player and often gets benched by her coach. Due to the stresses in each of their lives, this boils over into their relationship, which causes them to break up. Then, in the fourth quarter, it's been a few years since college. Quincy is now a big player on the LA Lakers, while Monica plays for the IBWA. At the time, the WNBA wasn't established yet. Quincy injures his knee during one game, and Monica, of course, rushes to see him, even though it's been a while, and she finds out he is actually engaged to be married. She challenges him to a one-on-one -on -one game. If he loses, he will call off the wedding. However, Quincy wins the match, but... He realizes that he cannot live without her, so he calls off the wedding anyway, and the two end up together. It's a funny, sexy, and beautiful display of a bond that only grows deeper the more challenges they overcome together. I definitely recommend it. Number 8. Brokeback Mountain The biggest surprise of this film isn't that the two main characters in the film are part of a gay romance, or that it shattered awards records in that regard but that it was directed by Ang Lee, a man known primarily for over-the-top action flicks. It wasn't his first romantic drama, he's also behind the likes of Sense and Sensibility, but after a decade of more action-oriented films, it was a big return to the genre. In the film, cowboys Ennis Del Mar and Jack Twist are hired to herd a flock of sheep for the summer. One night of heavy drinking, and Jack makes a pass at Ennis, who, reluctant at first, gives in and has sex with him. Over the course of the summer, they develop an emotional relationship, which ends in a brawl between them before each of them returns to their respective homes. Ennis marries his longtime fiancée, Alma, and has two children with her, 
And Jack returns to Texas after being fired for what happened on the mountain. And he marries a woman named Laureen. Four years later, and the two reunite by happenstance, and it rekindles something between them. As they begin to have an affair, both of their marriages and their lives begin to deteriorate. If you haven't seen this film, I won't spoil it any further, but be prepared for a heart-churning ending one way or another. Number 9. Two Weeks Notice Everyone loves Sandra Bullock, and in the late 90s through the early 2000s, Hugh Grant was in full dreamboat status. So, to see these two megastars playing in a rom-com together was simply a dream come true for most people. While it's not the greatest love story either one of them have ever been in, it has so many of the elements that made these two so popular within it, and a beautiful message at its center. Lucy is a progressive liberal lawyer who just can't seem to break out into major circles in New York, and she ends up working for George Wade, an arrogant billionaire playboy. After losing to him in court, he offers her a job in which she can do more good, helping protect communities while also developing new real estate. Soon, however, she's not just giving him legal advice, but also basically managing his entire life. And one night, he calls her in a huff, claiming it's an emergency, only for her to arrive and find out he just didn't know what to wear to an event. This makes her give him her final two weeks notice. She also finds out that the promise he made her about keeping the community center safe was just another lie, and this causes her to cut all ties with him. However, once she's gone, George realizes how truly inadequate and useless he really is without her, and desperately tries to win her back. The film is funny, well acted, and features all the aforementioned hallmark moments romantic comedies are known for, wrapped neatly in a hundred minute film. So if you're looking for something more fun and lighthearted this season, this is the one for you. Number 10, Made in Manhattan. Jennifer Lopez is hit or miss when it comes to acting. She basically plays the same character in every film, but depending on what the film is about is what makes that character work. And in this case, it fits perfectly. A girl from the Bronx, struggling to make ends meet, meets a fabulous millionaire who can grant her her every desire in a truly Cinderella-esque tale taking place in a more modern setting. It follows Marissa, a maid working at the Beresford Hotel so she can support herself and her 10-year-old son, Ty. One day, Marissa and her co-worker friend Stephanie are clearing one of the rooms belonging to a wealthy socialite, Carolyn Lane. Stephanie convinces Marissa to try on some of the clothes, including an expensive fur coat. Meanwhile, Ty befriends Chris Marshall, a political candidate, and share a mutual admiration for Richard Nixon and dogs. Ty asks if he can join him on the walk, but needs permission from his mom first, so they stop at Carolyn's room. Marissa answers still wearing the fur coat, and Chris is almost immediately smitten with her. Believing that she is THE Caroline, he asks her out to lunch, and the trio have a great time. However, despite her attraction to him, Marissa is terrified that hotel management will find out, so she tries to avoid him. He is obsessed with her, though, so Chris tries desperately to try to be with her. It's a fun and flirty film, and has a great feel-good ending to it, one that will put a smile on your face by the time the credits roll, so make sure to check this one out. Thanks for checking out the video! What's your favorite romantic film of all time? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. You can reach out to us on Twitter or X at Studios Fat, or chat with us on Discord, linked below. We've also recently launched our very own merch store over at FatNinja.shop, so be sure to check it out. You can buy all sorts of things there, shirts, hoodies, socks, cups, everything, including the one that I'm wearing right now. So make sure you check it out, and every support helps us, and we are greatly appreciated for it. With that being said, I've been your host, Raging Anybody. Happy Valentine's Day.